me tell you what we have to, days. We have to talk about um, is um, the one of our members, and we remember this is your club. So. One of our members, a guy named Dane Kingsley. He'd rather stay anonymous. Um, Dave <laughs> Kingsley. Um, oh, did I say his name? I, I, did, I didn't mean to do that. Um, it's an automatic thing. All right. Dave sent me an email. He said, hey, Cap, here's, here's a question. While you have all these folks together, and we're going to re recap this in a little while. While we have all these folks together, why don't you find out where the folks, let's, let's hear a preference. Where do you find raw wood? Um, how do you find it? Um, is it found on the ground? Fogwood. Uh, donated? Begging wood. Um, or from tree services, family wood. And uh, where do you get that wood at? And then, are you using homemade tools? Now, that's one, Dave, we're going to handle next Wednesday night. Because, yes, we do use homemade tools. And, yes, our members have them. And I hope they will bring them to the meeting next uh, Wednesday night and show you when we do tips and tricks because homemade tools can make this thing a whole lot of fun and it saves some money i mean if you got to pay 50 bucks for a parting tool in a, with a wooden handle if you can build your own for four dollars which way are you going to go and, and actually when you build at home with you might be made out of better steel so all right, we got some folks lined up for doing a gallery. And uh, did somebody leave uh, Dave, Dave Rhodes in? Uh, did yes, they, somebody yeah. finally let uh, me in. Yes, I'm sorry, I was having computer trouble. So we're now recording. Be square. Hey, hey, Captain, this so is Dave Dean. If you'll, uh, if you'll make me a co-host, I'll let folks in. All right, and your name again? Oh, OK. <laughs> That's me. I don't know my name. I mean, good golly. He's confusing. I muted by accident. I just muted you. Uh, That's not a problem. I came unmuted. All right. <laughs> that happens to me way too many times where I come unmuted when I probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> as long I'm as not talking can, about a Zoom we, call. <laughs> as long as well, Dean, you do a lot. You do a lot better at it compared to one of our other members. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's not start doing comparisons yet. I'm getting embarrassed. <laughs> it has happened once. Well, I don't think he's clocked in yet. <laughs> Hey, you want to see my bowl? Yep. Let's go Check ahead and get it started on them. Check it out. This is the bowl I had last week, right? Yeah. And I was going to put the dot painting on top. I need to paint it black, okay, with the black background. But the lady I'm making it for wanted uh, blue and purple dots. So I decided I'd have to have a white background. Okay, so painted the white background and I made a sample page I did today. Here's my sample page. There you go. Very nice. Right. Wait a minute, you got to plan this out? Well, that's <laughs> what uh, Matt said. Yes. Okay, so that's what that's going to be like. And here's the lid. Love it. Nice. All right. It's going to be great. Yeah. I, like, I like the grain match. Yeah, it does match. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, the bottom is not as dark as the top. I don't know why, but I think I might sand it back oh, down. And it's not what? It. It's dark. It, this is darker than this. It's the same piece of wood. I mean, it's like this. Oh, like that's good. Right there is great. Yeah. So 
anyway. It's a different, different color because it's got more heartwood in it. Yeah. Different, okay, that different might be. Growth, different age of the heartwood. All right. So anyway, when I made the lid, it's like a bell, right? So I put a bell tap the thing in it. <laughs> How you got that connected? How you got that connected? I put a little uh, eyelet in the middle and tied oh, okay. it with a uh, uh, fishing line. Okay. Right on. That's a piece of uh, acrylic pen blank. And like I said, she wanted her, the colors in blue and purple. And that one's blue and purple. So there you go. When uh, somebody gets you. into the candy dish, everybody's going to know it. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, if this turns out right. Oh, that'll be beautiful. That's going to be really nice, Brenda. Cool. Put a black finial on it because I wanted originally black background, but her color. At least you got your black in there. Yeah, yeah. So I had to add the little black, black dots. So I did I know you had to plan it out. <laughs> yeah, Matt said too. Well, that's that's why I'm working on this week. It's pretty. It's got good oh, drawings to it, so you got a good finish on it. It's you know what it is, don't you? Thirty four oh eight. You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Y'all keep beating that drum. It's like they ever they they uh, sponsor us. Nobody sponsors us. It's it's the easiest thing to use, man. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to have a, this, this, a discussion about uh, preferences and use. So, yeah. nope, 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 nope. One, have, layer of, one layer of 3408 compared to 10 layers of the uh, CA glue. Or, yeah, or that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 3408, you know, that is the way to go. If you have to rush that fast to get a piece done, I don't know, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> work smarter, not, not harder. Yeah, you know, yeah. My, my, my experience with 348, I'm going to be fun, uh, fair about it. My experience with 348, uh, several years ago, I bought some from a guy in at the at a wood turning club. He, he was selling glue and sandpaper and all that stuff at a club. I bought a bottle, it was rock solid before I got home. Um, oh, wow. And and when I brought it back, they wanted to dispute the fact that you know yeah. maybe you hmm. stored it wrong. I said I got home and dropped it, you know. Right. Um, but when hey, I found it, when I need to get I it from that fellow named Mark. <laughs> I got home when I got went back to bring it back, and he went to put it in the box. I realized what it was. He had a uh, like an Igloo Playmate cooler that he kept everything in just to carry it. That's where he stored the glue. And the accelerator, so and right. you mm. can't you can't you can't teach people about it, but that's a mistake. You don't store your accelerator with your glue. Yeah. I'm not talking about spraying it on. Don't get it in the same atmosphere. You know, yeah. keep it separated. If you have to, you put know, that's, the, that's one put thing one I'm real it. picky about is when I'm spraying my activator. I usually have it in my right hand, you know, and most of the time. Yeah, the CA glue, 3408, whatever, is in my other hand. Oh, no, oh, no. They will no, react. I'm not yeah, talking about reacting. About that. Not reacting through um, the air. I'm talking about maybe reacting through the container. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not trained to even speculate properly, but... Well, it's a catalyst, right? So it, it, if it connects with the stuff on the on the tip, it could catalyze into the whole bottle, I guess. Yeah, All I know. I, I know that I, I know that I have successfully glued the bottle to two of my fingers at the same time in the past. So <laughs> not on two different hands, right? Yeah. No, not on two different hands. <laughs> Matt, you just missed my uh, my dot painting. Oh, nice. See? What fun. I it's practice. I had to practice, right? Yeah, yeah. I, practice is wonderful. Yeah. I practice a lot. Yeah. 
Check this out. This is the top. Okay. And it's going to go inside. That would be so cool. I think so. Yeah. Right. I love how everybody like like puts the their own unique spin on all this. Yeah. It's very cool. Yep. Wait, wait. We got you That's great, for Brenda. Bringing it to I the group. Yeah, because Matt missed it. <laughs> That's okay. Thanks. Are you going to use so, uh, slightly different colors and stuff? Um, no, just the uh, the lady that I'm making it for wants it done in purple and blue. Okay. And because I had the uh, the black, <coughs> I put black dots in it too. So that's gonna be that's gonna be really nice. She's black, gonna be really happy with it. Yeah. So. Okay, Kane had an injection. What was that, Kane? Kane, you with us? Oh, can you hear me now? Um, <laughs> well, I thought I was frying on again. I, um, I bought a bunch of parts to get T-Mobile to go direct to the whatever that thing is, and it's asking for codes I can't get. I uh, guess I gotta walk to the T-Mobile, walk over to T-Mobile and ask them. Hey, Dane asked us, can we remind you? Um, that there that in our in our on our website we we provide you with the information for the 101 the uh, 101st airborne division uh they're collecting pens for their troops and they still need some pens to do that with and it's a great thing you're giving a gift to a troop going into war um and it, it's my but not fighting there doesn't matter uh, they have left their family in a home and their regular lifestyle and they're moving over to protect our freedom. Uh, it's easy to say they deserve a gift um, and you can help out with the freedom pen, really critical. And I talked to somebody yesterday that about the 22 pen project. And let me, I'm gonna take a moment and explain that. The 22 pen project is fairly simple. Um, there's a group of folks collecting pens to give to our troops and part of their rehabilitation. And the 22 all about is every single day on average, 22 veterans take their lives. As 22 people are having a difficult time with the world the world they're in and we're helping to get them out of that world and keep them out of that world and that pen 22 pen project is part of it so if you can help that information is also on our website probably the finest website wood turners have ever seen and if, if it's not in the top five um you're looking at the wrong places because we have it um, and uh next week no i'm sorry two weeks away one, two, three, three weeks away, whatever. August 26th, 7th, and 8th is SWAT in Texas. SWAT in Waco, Texas. Now, I'm give you my humble opinion. The finest wood turning symposium in the world. And it's in SWAT, Waco, Texas. And um, it, it still open spots to get in. And I guarantee you, you, you will not find a better... Um, program put on just for vet, for wood turners with no commitments you don't have to belong to a club you don't have to join a magazine you don't have to you know, do, 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 do you show up you pay your entry fee to go to the demonstrations you go to demonstrations you show up and don't pay your entry fee you can still walk the sales floor you can still look at the gallery uh, you can't eat food free but you know it is a great place but guess what right there in Waco, Texas. Every friend you've ever had in wood turning is going to be there. Every one of them. And if you have a question, you can ask it. If you have a comment, you can make it. Um, if you want to see great work, there you go. So, uh, and it's a fantastic, fantastic uh, way to spend the last week of August when it's nice and cool in Waco. It's really, you know, they bring in the cold front and gets down to like 101 or 102 and uh it's, it's really 
Real it, Dean, am I lying? No, it, it it probably won't get over 104 for sure. Oh yeah, I mean, and it's so nice. And, and but it's I, a it's a wet heat, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Definitely a wet heat. Yeah, and they put an air conditioner in the place this year, so it's really going to be great. Um, but if you need details, it's SWAT Turner's SWA. Get this, it's SWATURNERS dot org. And uh, they've got a great website, a lot of help, a lot of information. And uh, I keep saying it, been saying it for almost 20 years now. It's like going to a family reunion with family you like. Um, there's no pressure. Uh, I do like, I don't like to go to a place where you have to do something. There, all you have to do is enjoy yourself. All right, blistering. Hey, Eddie. Hey, oh, hey, yeah, and there he is, Ron Vincent, out of Wyoming. Yeah. yeah. Hey, my understanding on that 101st Airborne was not only pins, but anything that you wanted to send that was homemade. So if right. you have a bowl or a vase or something, that you can send that also. They, they'd appreciate it. Oh, yeah, fine. Uh, I would say bottle stoppers, but, you know, they are working. So let's uh, uh, <laughs> They probably don't stop in the middle of a bottle. Yeah, uh, you're right. That's useless where I live I, at. What? Yeah. Left over, you got to cork it up? Hey, wait. Um, Not many of them going to be drinking wine, I don't think. Yeah. It fits in beer. They fit in beer bottles, too. Of course, you know, who has those left over? Yeah. You know. Again. <laughs> <laughs> all right. They fit in your ginger ale bottles, all right? I love that when people talk about cozies to keep your beer cold. Is did you really holding it that long for it to get warm? Um, it's yeah. When they made it in sweat. When it made them in the little bottles, um, I think it was Miller had them. Um, I was much younger. And oh, that's uh, right. They're little six and seven ounce pony bottles. Yeah, I, I mean, turn it up and not even gulp. Just you know, okay, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> so you know the object of those those little pony bottles back in the day, right when they made them. So the object was is when you when you bought it, you know, it was a road. You know, granted, very bad to do. But by the time you crack the first one, by the time you get through the last one, it's still just as cold as the first one. <laughs> yeah. It, and why don't you have a wooden can koozie around that can? Whoa, uh, yeah, you see the decorators got you. There you go. Yeah, good, 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 good observation. Uh huh. No, no, I've never, I've just never had the, the, the gumption to make a can koozie. Maybe I'll do that sometime. All right, put that on your list. Yeah, yeah, put that on my list. Well, hey, Eddie, um, I think we need to go to our uh, demo for the evening. All right, who you have? Isn't that Walt? We've got Walt Wager up for the demo tonight. Walt, are you ready? I'm ready. Anytime you are. All right. All right. Well, let's bring you. All right. Up so, here. what what I'm going to do today, or what what I'm going to attempt to do, is to make a threaded insert for this the, this vessel with this top, and. Um, we talk a little bit about threaded inserts and then the machinery and then Captain Eddie's uh, video on how to do um, hand chasing. Nice. So to start with, you get a couple of examples here. The reason we're interested in threaded inserts, what a threaded insert is, let me start with that is that if you try to thread some of this wood, like this spalted maple, uh, you're likely not to be real successful because it's soft and it's variable uh, uh, density and all that kind of stuff. On top of that, the, the further something out is from the lathe, uh, the more variable it is and, and the harder it is to thread. And on top of that, if you messed up, you messed up. But if you do a threaded insert, which is this piece here, 
This is African black wood for the, um, uh, the tenon and uh, uh, African black wood for the mortise. And you thread those, then you can, you can glue them in and you have a top that will screw on, right? Come on now, behave. And you have a container that's secure. So the threaded insert is an easy way to be able to thread larger objects. And it also, uh, if you mess up, you've only messed up a little piece of wood. You haven't messed up the whole project and um, you can do it that way. The other thing, get this aside, is another, another vessel. The threaded insert in this one actually is a part of the design of the piece. So you have here a collar and that's a threaded insert, then a piece of cocobola, which is the ring. And then the top is, is also threaded. That's just an insert that's not cut off. And uh, it becomes part of the design of the piece. That screws on there too like that. Questions so far? By the way, anybody has any questions or any comments anywhere along this thing, please just speak up. Okay, sounds good, Walt. <clears throat> So the first thing we have to understand is that uh, the insert is going to go into a, a piece, so it's got to be sized, and then we can we can make the ring and thread it, and we'll do that. And uh, African black wood and and uh, dense woods like boxwood, which you just I, I simply can't find in the U United States. I don't know where where it comes from, but um, African black wood. Uh, works well. Uh, some of the uh, uh, Bradford pear, some of the dense, denser woods with nice straight grain are, are the best pieces to uh, uh, thread. And this is a piece of cherry and it's soft, but we're going we're gonna to thread that too. So you don't have to have that nice wood or the exotic woods, uh, but they are easier to thread. Are you, are you putting your threads across the end grain or how do you, how do you mount the wood for this? It's, it's mounted as a spindle piece. The, uh, the uh, end grain is this way, the side grain is this way. Thank you. Uh, it, it moves less or it moves more evenly than if you had side grain, I mean, uh, face grain uh, wood. You can do it both ways. So it's, it's, not, it's not impossible to do it the other way. All right. And cherry is a good wood for this, or cherry works for this? It'll work tonight, I hope. <laughs> okay, <thanks. laughs> we'll, we'll know soon enough. No, we'll I've, pull I've, for I've, you, I've, I've, I've threaded uh, punky wood before, and we might use some super glue. We might not. Depends on how the threads are going to be uh, cut out. And uh, we're going to use, I'm going to start with a threading machine because that's where I started. I mean, I watched somebody do it at a uh, conference one time. And I forget who it was, but it was uh, uh, some professional wood turner had some hand chasing tools and he and he threaded a, a box top. And I thought, hey, that's cool. And I went out and I bought a set of crown threading tools. And I went home and uh, and tried to do it. I ended up giving the tools to another club member and said, here, you do it. You take these and you do a demo. He never came back. <laughs> So I watched Bonnie Klein at a uh, conference, at a symposium a couple of years ago. And uh, Bonnie Klein is a wood turner and she made this machine, threading machine. And um, it, it fit on a 10 inch lathe. And, um, you know, we, it's nice to have a 10 inch lathe, but, I saw another machine, the one we're going to use tonight, but I, I, drilled, I drilled and tapped the bottom of this and put it on a uh, one inch tool post and I can put it in the tool post like this and use that to thread, thread tops. I'm not going to use it 
This is not my my lathe. It's the um, the tool post doesn't go down far enough to be at center. So I'm going to use a different machine. But if you have a, a Baxter threader or a Bonnie Klein threader and it's only on your 10 inch lathe, you can make it work on a another lathe by threading and putting in a tool post that fits. And for you Gene. folks who are very, very creative, you can build your own. Which you yes, do. I've done that. And I'll talk about it and why, uh, why, you, why you might spend uh, $250 or whatever they cost for something like this, rather than building your own if you're going to do a lot of it. You're going to play around with it and you want to, and you want to learn what it, how it works and everything else. You can, you can build your own. If you have a machine shop where you can get something sturdy enough, you can build your own. I built mine out of uh, a, a couple pieces of PVC and some wood and some uh, grub screws and whatnot, and it worked. But it, it doesn't have the rigidity and the precision that you would like to have if you're going to do a lot of this stuff. That, I mean, it's one of those cost benefit things, you know, how much do you how much do you want to play around and how much do you want to get done? Oh, yeah, it's true. But I, I mentioned that because Dave Kingsley is wanting to know, can you build your who builds tools? So uh, that's the reason I mentioned that, Walt. <laughs> yeah. And the answer is, yeah, you can you can surely do it. I mean, all it is is a chunk of metal with a screw through it and uh, a couple uh, bushings to to secure it. So it just depends on what your skill level is on building tools. All right. Great. Uh, all right, so no questions so far. What we're going to do is we're going to measure. And I start I'm going to do at the top of that thing. Yeah. I'm going to start with the inside ring, which is the uh, mortise, because when I'm doing a threaded top like this. I want the, the screw threads to be on the outside of the insert. If you're going to put something in there, you don't want to put whatever you're putting in there to get into threads and, and not be able to get the top back on. So if the threads are on the outside, uh, you, this is an urn. If you're putting ashes in there, you, you can screw the top back on and it won't get in the way. And so I said, well, why would you ever want to take the top off an urn? Well, I don't know. I haven't been there and done that. So, uh, but the people that I sell urns to want threaded tops, or they like threaded tops. I've sold them both ways. So, um, the other thing you could t you could make inserts out of is something like Corian, which is a plastic or a resin, and uh, it turns quite well and it threads quite well. So, if you got some black Corian. There's no reason you couldn't use that. I mean, once the top's on, you don't see the insert anymore. So it's a, a, one of those calls. Since we're woodworkers, we'll use wood. So I'm going to make a, uh, I'm going to, I already prepared uh, a piece, a blank of cherry. I'm going to cut it in half. There's a tenon on both sides, and we're going to do the ring first, the piece that goes into the top. Again, if you have any questions or something's not clear, please speak up and uh, let me know. And um, I'm, I'm sure that this is big enough. I'll cut this in half and then we'll, we'll set up the machine. to chase things across the floor. Now 
Now I noticed that this piece was tapered a bit, and so this is a little bit larger than this piece. Then uh, it's it's a slight taper, but I'm going to put the larger piece in first for the ring. Measure the inside, the top where the insert's going to go, and I've cut a flat in the top so that it sits, it sits solid on the, on the inside of that top. And it's just about the right size. Just a speck barge, so. I'm just going to take a scraper and pull it down a little bit. If Brenda's paying attention, Brenda is our decorator. Uh, his floor is clean. I'm sorry. Is that a question? No, no. Brenda's been correcting us on decoration all night. Yes, Eddie. I noticed the floor was real clean. Yeah. Oh, and Brent. <laughs> Brenda's never seen that before. <laughs> it's not. It doesn't shot. happen in my garage. Where's <laughs> Ruby? Okay, that fits in there pretty well. There's a little tab on here I was trying to get off just to make sure that it wasn't hitting on the top. Of it. All right, so that's that's the outside of our insert. And this is the mortise, so I'm going to cut a ring out of it. And the um, okay. we're going to be about the same size as the top. A little bit smaller. I don't need a whole lot of threads because the rings the rings are actually pretty thin or uh, not in the, in the thickness but I do need enough room to get threads in there and and uh, not hit the bottom of the of the uh, the top or the uh, the, the uh, waist I did not cap this is Troy Forrester my number is 2419 and uh, the other thing is what did what I do with that little ruler? Oh, here it is. I do want this to be perpend uh, parallel with the wave bed, and if I put this on here, and it's it's very common for us to when we're when we're doing something. Can you do the overhead, Tom? 
like this that you think you're getting it square, but it's really not. If I put that ruler in there like that against that edge, you can see that I am not parallel with the lathe bed. And it's easy to taper something and not be able to see that taper. So I want to check that and make sure that when I, when I, uh, before I go to thread that, that it's squared and parallel to the lathe bed. I'm just going to take a scraper. I don't know what's wrong. I mean, I've tried, but, you know, undoing but, things. Um, You could you could use a skew. You could use a lot of different things to. Hello, I don't know why you're asking, but here I am. It's more square, but not quite square enough. We got it's kind of fuzzy, Tom. The, oh, there we go. It's maybe <laughs> thought it was maybe my maybe it was my uh, helmet that was making things fuzzy. Did one more time. All right, that's that's much better. Now, if I was hand chasing this, we can. If we have time later, I'll 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 entertain you with some hand chasing. But uh, there's there's a tool. I, I made this tool. You're talking about making tools. It's a piece of uh, it's just cold rolled steel, and I've ground it so that it's uh, it's flat on in there, and it's got this little hook on here. And if I were hand chasing this, I'm going to put a relief in here so that if I'm hand chasing, the tool won't hit the back. And I'll do that just to, as, a, as a step in here, although I don't really need it for the machine. And that just puts some relief on the, on the back edge of that so that the threading tool doesn't hit the back surface. Okay, now we'll set up the threading tool. And what, well, what I should do first is uh, we, we need to make sure that everything is square. And in order to do that, I'm going to remove this chuck. Can you stay on the on the top camera? And this is just a, a, a piece of a flat piece of wood mounted on a, a face plate. So we need to do get this out of the way. Make it better so you can see better. I've got a square.
I'm going to put the, put this so it's square. And then I'm going to lock it down and move this up. until it's square and then I'm going to lock this machine lock it down here on the uh, on the tool post and now if if the if the uh, banjo is square this is going to be square to the cutter so I can move the banjo out of the way take this off And the cutter that I'm using is uh, mounted in a collet. It's a 60 degree thread cutter. And there are other kinds of This is another another cutter. It's in a it's in a uh, a collet that you would use in a Morse taper uh, spindle, and you would have a draw bar on it to tighten it up. But we're not we're not using this one. This one has a uh, a, a collet that you can tighten down without the draw bar. Either one will work though. Any questions about that so far? So, so it looks good if you, got, if, you, if you got a little confused about the squaring, you'll, you'll get that question answered in just a moment. And you see how his setup is going to work for her. Yeah, it's, uh, being square is, is everything if you're going to cut straight threads. Yeah, so if you watch them square up both pieces and unsquare one, in a moment you're going to watch them square it back. Right, well... Uh, what I've got to do is move it up to the cutter. I'm going to set the, the tool. It's got a couple uh, little handles here. One moves it in and out. One moves it forward. And there's a 16 threads per inch screw in here. So as I move it forward, it's going to move forward at the rate of 16 threads per inch. Now in the insert, we only need about four or five threads. But I want to be able to see what it's going to look like. And as long as I don't move this this one, move the tool post, and I square up the uh, square up the um, banjo, everything should stay square. Now that's all assuming your banjo is nice and square, <laughs> nice and straight. All right. So, actually, if you you if you if you look over the piece and you look at the edges and line them up with your with your eye, you can tell pretty quickly when they're when they're out of square. You can see small differences, but the the tools actually help you to get that. If it doesn't look right, then you got to go back and see where you maybe made a mistake. So now I'm going to I'm going to move this out to the point where I can I can move this into the cutter and start making my threads. I want to just see let it touch all the way around to see that it's square and it's not. See, I, it's not touching over here. Oh. Maybe it is. Still looks square. Okay, we're going to go with it, and we'll we'll see how it goes. The cutter is going to be moving about three thousand RPM. 
And that's the advantage probably of the machine over hand uh, chasing with regard to soft wood, because it will cut the soft wood. If you're hand chasing, you're gonna be chasing about 350 revolutions per minute. And the wood is not moving as fast across the cutter surfaces as it will be here. So the advantage, if there is an advantage to the machine is that it, it will cut cleaner threads on soft wood. Everything is locked down. We gotta lock this down. Now I can turn this into the cutter. See that it's cutting evenly. Those threads look pretty good. So I can uh, back this out of the way. Move this out. And uh, take it out of the chuck. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You yep. made that threading cut with one pass? One pass. Yep. All right, it's it's, a, it's here six, in amazement. It's 16 threads per inch. They're not very deep. But you don't want to go, you don't want to keep pushing in because the more you push in, you're you're cutting the tops off every every time you push it in and you're going to get more and more splinters. If you can get it in one pass, it's going to be better with the machine. Now, this is not the same as chasing threads. You can't do that in one pass. But this is, uh, these, these threads actually look pretty good. And what I do is take a, um, toothbrush, brush out the sawdust. And put a little paste wax in the in the threads. I can do this now or do it later. So I have to make the tenon that's going to screw into here. But I'll let the, the wax kind of go into the wood. Can you see the threads? Yeah, oh. great. Right there's great view. Right, right there. Yeah. Impressive. For softwood, that's pretty good looking threads. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to make the, uh, the mortise and have to go back to um, put the... At home, I have two lathes. I have a threader on one lathe and the other lathe. But actually, I don't have to align this again. If I leave it alone, it should stay square. But I do have to take it out because I can't turn the I can't turn the piece down to where I need to be without the tool wrist. So we'll have to square it again, but it'll go quickly.
Okay, the, I think the hardest thing to learn about using the machine or even, you know, even with hand threading is how big do you have to make the tenon in order that the threads are going to screw in to the top? How much do you think it has to be bigger or smaller than the inside of the top? Bigger. It has, to the, it has to be the same diameter once it's threaded. Yeah, so it is bigger, but it's only as big, it's only as much bigger as the bottom of the thread. And what is that? What do you? What would you guess? How uh, how many millimeters or or uh, three thirty seconds? Three thirty seconds. Get out of dodge! He just made that number up. It's it's actually about. Uh, for 16 threads per inch, 0 0.039 uh, thousandths. So, or, uh, let's see, what would that be? Hundreds of an inch. So, anyhow, it's uh, it's about a millimeter. Just about a millimeter. So, I want this to be about a millimeter larger than the inside diameter of these threads. Members, before you say, how am I going to calculate that? In a few minutes, we're going to show you the test and how you can adjust. So stick around. This is machine threading. And uh, if we get Walt to stick around a little bit, we'll do a little hand threading at the end. Um, but you know, I, I, brought, I brought my hand threader with me. We can try a little bit on some cherry. We'll see how it goes. All right. But just for, can... a ba just yeah. for a basic explanation. And in our... Um, chat tonight we have some locations for you to buy the the threading rig that walt is showing you it's that information's in our chat before you leave save the chat oh you know what i did i measured the inside but i didn't i didn't take off oops i didn't take off the millimeter the machine's coming apart here now. Something happened. The knot came off. Cut the thing. Yeah, it's good. It's good. All right. So I measured the inside. And I've got to add a millimeter. Actually, I think the millimeter is too much, but somebody convert 0 0.036 to uh, millimeters and see what you get. 0 0.036 inches to millimeters, if you have a calculator out there. millimeters. 0 0.91. 0.91 millimeters. Okay, so it's a little less than a millimeter. But that'll be good enough, close enough. Okay, it looks better. So not only is this the mortise, it's also the insert that go, drops into the, the uh, top of the piece. So the back of this insert is going to be this dimension right here. And that will come off the back. Again, I only need a few threads on this, but I've got to come down to that level to in order to be able to get those those threads.
And again, if I was if I'm hand threading this, I have to have some relief on the back so that if the when the tool gets through the threads, it doesn't hit the back of the uh, piece. And I'll just do that a little bit just to know how much thread room I'd have to work with here. Then I'll set set the machine up again as quickly as I can. I want to I do want to face this off so that I have a good flat surface. And I do want to round this front end a little bit. What am I doing here? Remember, you don't want to do what Walt just did. He was a little bit sidetracked. So um, once you face off that piece, don't change your chuck. Yeah, I put it back in the same spot, I hope. <laughs> okay, yeah. We, we, we sort of have them dancing on age right now, so stick <laughs> with us. Yeah, this, uh, hindsight's always, you know. <laughs> 2020? Cheaper than foresight, I guess. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> So again, we'll get our banjo squared up. <clears throat> we'll set the other piece out of the way so we can find it later. <clears throat> Again, I just kind of check it visually. And if it doesn't look right, try to figure out why. That looks pretty good. Then get our cutter back on there. And there are a number of videos on the web uh, about this particular threading machine. 
So if you're interested in it, whoops, didn't mean to do that. If you're interested in it, uh, you can check out those videos too. That did, didn't it? Did I do that? Yep. Well, I'm going to line it up visually. If I get this square, that looks pretty good. <laughs> Okay, everything's pretty tight and looks pretty square. So we're going to cut the outside of the uh, mortise, of the tenon, I'm sorry. The threads don't look bad, and we'll uh, see if it fits. I'm going to leave the machine, leave this right where it is, because if I move anything other than this, oh, I can't back it out, can I? Well, let's put it out. <clears throat> Let's put it out. I'll have to get it lined up again. I didn't leave myself quite enough room back here. That. Too loose, too small. Oh so no! What do do, so what do you do when it's too small? You get another piece of wood <laughs> because there's no way of putting more wood back on here in order to make. It's, I, when I measured it, I measured. It, I, I thought I pulled it out, um, uh, made it a, a, about a millimeter larger, and evidently I. I didn't. I probably should have checked it against the edge first to make sure it was larger than the the uh, uh, the mortise. So I I will just go through the I'll operation. I'll cut this off, make it the right size, and and thread it again. If I have your patience for that. Oh, you have our oh, patience. Go ahead. You're good. <laughs> We, we never know how to correct something until we do it wrong, and that was just a type, a little brief pause. Remember, folks, you can do this in your own shop, just what Walt did, and you yeah. can recover from it, just like Walt's going to do. Uh, the, the, the brakes haven't completely failed. Just pump them a couple of times, and we're back to the route. So we're going to keep going. Uh, well, Walt was getting all this ready. I have to remind you that we are in the market. We, being Worldwide Wood Turners, uh, is in the market for a safety director. So uh, if you're interested in that position, we'd like to get about a two or three minute safety tip each week. Um, and it would have really is going to help our novice turners. We never call them beginners novice turners um, on on the way they handle things in their shop and the way they get things done. Um, we've joked about it for a long time about Brenda Thornton being our director of our Band-Aid degree. Um, it, 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 that was a joke, but you have to be ready for and know what you can walk into. 
So we want a safety director. If you're interested, email me or put it in the chat. We'll get to it. And next Wednesday evening, at this time, we'll be doing tips and tricks. And we're wondering what kind of tricks you've got up your sleeve. Those are some nice sliding cuts. Nice. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna measure this again. Gonna add a millimeter to it. I have a question on that real quick. Shouldn't we be adding a millimeter per each side? So two millimeters? No. Okay. Um, you're you're taking off uh, a half a millimeter on each side, basically. I mean, you're you're taking off the two millimeters. I don't know. Better shut up. <laughs> the answer no, I, is no. I was just asking. I wasn't sure. <laughs> Now I'm going to do a trick that um, Alan Batty talks about in, in, in the video. This is on hand chasing, but it works here too. And that is, if you cut down to the uh, inside diameter of the threaded piece and it fits on there, you know that that's, that's too small. I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's the right size for the, ins the bottom of the thread, basically. So I'm going to try that. This is a little trick that, that uh, not Stuart Batty, this is Alan Batty. He's not around anymore, but there's a video and he, he has a, a video on thread chasing on the web also, uh, which I think is a, a good video as well as Eddie's video, which is very good. So this is this is the size that the um, caliper tells me it should be. Just a little bit larger than what the caliper tells me it should be, but I'm going to go down that another millimeter just to get that to fit inside that piece. Not quite. I, I, I have to ask Walt, but wait a minute. If you make it. Pardon? If you make it small enough to fit inside of those other threads, how are you going to get threads to come proud of that to be into the groove? I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut the tenon back just shy of that piece that goes inside. Oh no, man, I thought you were, I thought you were I'm, tricking me. Okay. <laughs> It's like putting the lid on a container. If you take a little bit of time, now that that fits over the threads. So I don't want to go. I don't want to go that deep. I want to go shy of that, just enough to turn to turn some threads down to that witness mark. This will be my witness piece. If I get down that far, I've gone far enough. Does that make sense? Perfectly. It should in a minute. I figured you figured a way to put the, the wood back on. That's, you know. There we are.
Put that millimeter back on. A little large, but that's okay. We can take wood off. We can't put it back on. We just learned that lesson the last time I did this, right? <laughs> I should say we learned. I, it. I should say I reinforced it because we've all done it. Yeah, I mean, I to figure you'd be the member of the day if you if you figured out how to do that. <laughs> Bob Grinstead says it'd be wonderful for his turning. You know. Oh, let's, let me let me go one one step further and put that relief cut in there. Ah. Getting ahead of myself here. Now, in, in this type of threading the relief, relief cut is not mandatory. It's just a nice detail and it's easy to work with. Yeah, it's a nice place that you can know where to stop. That's not mandatory. Hey, Walt, we had a suggestion on how to put wood back on. Bob, heard how Bob says to put the lathe in reverse. Well, that's why Bob's work is so small. With um, with today's uh, 3D printers, anything's possible, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Top view, please. Pardon? We switch cameras. There we go. You see the groove, folks? Thanks. The one on the left. Uh, That's the relief. If you do hand chasing, it's mandatory. Um, it's, this. it's a nice detail when you're doing it this way. If you wonder how this goes, pick up the medicine bottle on your kitchen table and take a look at how threads work and done in, in press outs. Uh, they have the same thing. There's a certain degree of relief back there to keep the caps where to screw down tight and not bind on anything. And that's what this is going to do. Walt, who who's your who's your AV director in there tonight? Um, Kenny. Oh boy, this this is his shop. It's his lathe and everything, and his video setup. And I'm very grateful for him to do this because if you watch it from my my shop, I have CenturyLink uh, internet, and I get about something between uh, 1.5 and 2 megabits per second upload, and you wouldn't see or hear anything. Ouch. Yeah. Hey, that's even better than yeah. T-Mobile. <laughs> yeah, Tom, we, uh, I definitely appreciate you opening up the shop to us and letting uh, Walt do the demonstration for us again. He won't, he, he won't even let me, he that. won't even let me clean up. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. Well, he's been to my shop. He knows what kind of job I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna square up the banjo and then I'm gonna do a a, a sight squaring on the uh, on the tool. So I say you don't need you don't need but a speck of dust or dirt between the surfaces of a square and something else. Yeah. Not, not be able to get it square. That looks pretty good in my setup here. Let's see. Say, Walt, what kind yes. of threading jig are you, what threading jig are you using? What, what? What threading jig are you using? Chef work kits. Chef work kits, okay. So folks, earlier there was a link for the chef work kit that was put into the chat. Members helping members, that's what we do, stuff. When you have- what Oh, what threading jig am I using? What's it called, Tom? Chef work kits. Okay. All right, so we gotta move this guy in. I 
think I left myself enough room. Maybe not. Oh, I have to move the whole banjo in. Okay, I think that will do it. Looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Our witness is right there. That's how deep the thread we want. We'll probably do two passes on this. Okay, take my toothbrush. Brush this off. The threads look pretty good. You'll see they fit. What I do at the top. That's not good. What do I do at the top? Come on, Walt. <clears throat> Here, no, that's that's the dead one. Is it inside the roof? Is it where? Is it inside the roof? No. Oh, I think I heard it drop. Here it is. <clears throat> Always put things where you can find them. Step number one. And what am I going to do? I'm just going to swing this out. It's a tiny bit too big. So at this point, there's two things I can do. I can, I can turn it around again in the lathe and take some of these off and then re rethread it rather than trying to go deeper, or I'm just going to, I'm just going to go deeper. Uh, make another pass. And again, I'm going to use my um, witness mark here to where I started. I'm going to get it back in the same spot. I hope. I'm going to crank it in a little bit more.
Now, I dust it off. How about that? Woo it works. So now the the trick is we we know that the uh, outside of this will fit into the top. This we we measured it and it should fit into the top. And the bottom is gonna go into the base. We haven't got any hole through the bottom yet, and uh, we have to do that. And we have to cut down the bottom so that it fits uh, into the uh, the top where we want it to be. So we got to take this apart. We're done with threading. There was, uh, Alan, Alan Betty had a, uh, another saying. He said, if you want to learn to hand chase threads, get a ton of boxwood, lock yourself in a room, and you'll come out screwy. <laughs> All right. So we're going to put this back on here. And see what we have to do to make this fit onto the. Now we were talking about relief. We are going to need some relief on the top so that the 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 thread when it screws down goes past the bottom of that of that thread. Otherwise, it won't sit flat uh, against the uh, surface we're going to put it on. I'll, I'll, it'll make sense more later. So this has to sit down in here. It's a little bit big, which is good, because if it was too small, it wouldn't sit down in there very well. So we're going to take some of that down. <clears throat> on your bed white where did I put the tool rest is the question right So what do I do with my calipers? Just about right. Okay, it's too long. 
and I don't need that many threads and you don't want to be screwing it forever. So uh, we'll, we'll cut some of that off. This should be the right size to go down inside that vessel. That's a little bit big. I'll take a little bit more off and then we'll drill the hole in it so that, that you can put something into the vessel. That looks good. Does anybody know what you don't want to do? Use a Forstner bit to do that. You could use a Forstner bit. Why not? Watch the, watch the heat. Well, it would get hot. That's true. And, and if it were African black wood, you'd surely crack it. Yep. But the, what you don't want to do is you don't want to go further this way than the, the piece that's going down into the <laughs> wood. True, true. That's rule 740. That, uh, and that yeah, rule, yeah, seven, rule 740. 747A, the inside diameter shall never exceed the outside diameter. Is that, right. <laughs> is that what, which one it is? 747A, yeah, well. Tonight it is. Yeah, I violated that twice this past week. All right, so <laughs> now for, for the insert, what I'm going to do basically is cut this off as a ring that will go down inside, but I need to make it, I need to make it shorter. I mean, if I cut it off, let's see, can I do that? I can say, I'm going to shut, cut it off and leave it too long so you can see what happens, but I, I think I won't do that. Um, oh, you won't, you got it. <laughs> I'll cut it. <laughs> Well, first, the other, the other thing is you don't want to go too far out, but you do want to go down far enough so that you get a hole when you cut it up. That edge. I'll just do that with the uh, party tool. Okay, we're far enough now. If I cut this off, we should have a ring. I am going to shorten this a bit. rounding the outside edge so that that first uh, thread doesn't catch and break off. And that screws down far enough now.
So I do have a little bit of flash on there that I didn't cut down quite far enough, but it, it'll come out and be fine. Now I'll put this back in. This is the other ring that's going in the top. Actually, you can put this in here and clean this up. And we can cut the outside ring off. And there we have a threaded insert. This will be glued into the top. This will be glued into the bottom. They're easier to thread together when they're glued in. You also didn't wax the exter the um the the proud yeah. threads. We clean it up a little bit. And there you go. And it's a little bit on the top. It's a, a little bit too big to go in there um, the way it should. Although I measured it and I cut it off and remember I stuck it on there. Um, it, it, it's ex expanded a little bit or um, my measure was a little off, but what I can do is I can put it, I don't have a spigot jaw chuck here right now, but I can put it back on the spigot jaw chuck and just take off a fraction more uh, wood on this side and uh, it will sit down in there and sit close to the, to the top edge. I don't want it that far from the top. I want it to sit down like this. Now I have a uh, here's one I made previously out of black wood for this. That's all trimmed up, and the Top sits on there like that. Very nice. So that's that's the threaded insert, and it's it's believe it or not, it's easier to do than threading the actual object itself and trying to get it all to fit together. Because you saw when when I made a mistake, I just could t take another piece of wood and and do that piece over. Right. But if I had done it on that top and the bottom. Well, they either have to make a new bottom or a new top or or uh, just, you know, go in the other room. Put in a new or or over again, yeah. Very Outstanding, nice. Walt. Very nice.
Thank Very you. Very informative. Do you want to you yeah, just that's a, really cool. a, a basic introduction? Good, good job, to the, Walt. Thank you. Do you want a basic introduction to, to uh, uh, thread chasing with the, the mechanical tool? Oh, yeah, not, Billy, uh, Bird, <laughs> Billy Bird asked for that special. Sure. Hey, hey Walter, I got a suggestion. Pardon? Uh, Walter, I got a suggestion. Yeah. Uh, usually on a cold day or when I don't want to do anything else, uh, I'll make um, about six or more of the uh, tenons and um, uh, mortises. I, I just put on that where they'll fit together. That way, when I'm doing a piece, I already have a set ready to go. All I right. got to do well, is I, I do set. that. In fact, I, I've got. I've got probably five or six sets of these things already for some vessel, and they're all about the same size. Okay. Because I have, if I'm making an urn, I need enough room to put, you know, the ashes in. Yeah. So, well, never, never mind them. No, I, but the same thing with finials <laughs> and Christmas ornaments. If I'm making, right. if I'm making finials, I might as well set up and make twenty of them and right. throw them in the drawer, okay. because making them one at a time doesn't isn't very efficient. I so, just thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah, thanks. And I, it's, it's, it's a good suggestion. Very good idea. So if, if I'm gonna hand thread on this just to make a mortise, I'm gonna round over this edge. And I'm going to put some relief in the back. Can we camera view? And the chaser that I'm using is a double-sided tool. This side's for the uh, outside. This side is for the inside of a mortise. And I'll do an outside, then I'll cut a little hole in there and do the inside just to show you the threads, the difference in that. And um, you're you're really turning. This is this may this may not work so good with the cherry. We'll see. But we're turning it at about 300 RPM. This button came off, Tom. Just... Oh no, you broke it. You got to. Yeah, I know. Lathe. I feel bad about that. You got to buy him a new lathe now. Can you, you know... turn the wrist out all the way down to the low position? And yeah. Point the thing at the one at the. Uh... Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're going to turn this to, I think, one. So we're going about somewhere between 200 and 500 RPMs per minute. This, I think we we decided this was about 300. And the uh, the trick, I think. And, and Eddie, correct me if you're wrong. You're, you've done this more than I have. The trick is just get this thing started in the in the corner so that 45 degree. You're getting some threads going, and it's kind of a circular motion. And you come. No, this is where the flatness of your tool rest and the cleanness of your tool rest comes into play. Yep. And I yeah, love that robust. It's a scraper, so you you've got to have it level or down. Typically, it's best to do to recess the female threads first, and then do the male threads final because it's easier to take material off of the the tenon yes. the male threads than the female. Yeah, it's easier to uh, modify the. It's easier to modify the uh, tenon. Then it is yep. to modify the, the mortise. So that's why that's you true. want to do that first. And again, that's the, the, the jig I use. 
the tendency is to taper it. And I mean, it's just because you're coming, you're coming around from the outside and, and yep. leveling it off. I mean, when, when you're coming around from the outside, you don't tend to give the back enough uh, credit. So once you get those threads started, you, you can start coming in, letting it, and it's very crumbly. If I were, if I were going to try to do this with uh, cherry, I would saturate it with super glue first. I mean, I'm trying to do it with cherry, but it's not, it's not giving me very good threads. They might work, but, but it wouldn't be very good threads. If I do that with African blackwood, I don't know what you can see. Give myself a little uh, relief here. So, folks, that's the Mike Mahoney threading. Threading. This is a my uh, uh, Carter. Mike, it's a Mike Mahoney tool. Yep. Very intuitive. Very easy to use. Again, I'd want to round off the top a little bit. And then come in. For those asking about the relief cut he just put in, watch what happens when he goes across the face of it. Relief cuts give him a place to get out. And instead of it's Otherwise, you'll bind it. Instead of crumbles, you get these fine shavings, and that's what you want. Those fine shavings give you a nice clean thread that you that you've cut. So the 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 um, this just is a matter of of practice and timing. Uh, if you're going to cut softwood, I, again, I think the, the jig does a better job than hand threading because you're not going very fast with hand threading. But hand threading is a whole lot of less setup. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if you, you got your threader and you've got the pieces measured, you, you don't have to set up your, your jig to, to do something. But it does take, take some practice to be able to yeah, do this. Any, Any other questions? You want me to do the inside one? Please. Sure, go ahead, sir. Demonstrate that as well. Well, what, what speed are you turning at? About 300 RPMs? Three, about 300. I don't okay. know exactly yeah. because it haven't, we haven't got a, a RPM meter on here, but we, we measured it before with okay. a, a tachometer, and I think it was around 300, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's about 300, 350 that I, uh, that yeah. I thread at with, with that uh, threader. So if I'm going to do the inside on this one, <laughs> I'm going to turn it back up to, to cutting speed. And for your tool presentation, do you, do you uh, present it similarly uh, like, a, like any other scraper? For, for which tool? For the uh, Carter and Son there. Um, I'll show you on center, but, but raised up. Yeah. You're cutting just slightly at, above or at center. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
trying to square it off a little bit. Again, here it's it's a good idea that it, you check it. Yeah, see how square you are with it. And it's still I'm tapering. It's tapering uh, out out this way, so I have to come in a little bit on the bottom. But I'm going to cut a relief. I'm going to use that little scraper tool I made to cut the relief because when you do the uh, when you put this tool in there, if it hits the bottom, it'll stop and then it'll strip out your threads. So you need a, a little place where you, you, it won't hit the bottom. You can get it out before it hits the bottom. That makes sense? Just like on the outside, you have to give the, yep. the threader some relief. Yeah, on the inside though, you, you're cutting it so that when you, when you come in with a tool, you can get it out before you hit the bottom of the uh, the wood there. And you, um, they make, they make these tools that you can buy. I think Crown makes them. Sorby, Sorby makes them. Okay. Maybe have an old useless scraper you don't use, you can modify it, modder. Watch the heat. You can modify and make your own. Right. You know, so, like those freights. So I want to double check that I've got a, uh, a little rounded area here. If I come in on it square and I hit, I catch, I catch one of those teeth on that square, it's not going to be good. It's not going to, it's not going to want to go in at all. I've learned that the hard way. Even everybody, everybody tells you that, but all you have to do is forget it one time. So if I take this tool now, and I don't want to start at the, at the, uh, at the very end, I want to start in the middle and I just want to with African blackwood is you can't see it. <clears throat> and the tool does the work for you basically. Once you get that thread started, it'll pull itself in. And it's your job to get it out of there before it hits the, hits the end on the, on the bottom. Members, that was a demonstration of how to apply the interior and exterior threads. Uh, he can't screw this together. If he does, he'll make demonstrator of the year. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> right, right. It's just a demonstration on the interior and exterior threads. Just what hand chasing is. But it's the same, the same operations. Basically, you're making your, your, um, uh, your mortise uh, first, as someone else said, you know, that it's easier to adjust the uh, tendon than it is to adjust the mortise. So you make your mortise first and, and then, and then make a tendon that will fit into it 
and then adjust it so that it fits into the vessel that you're making the insert for. And it's it's just a matter of, of doing it and practicing a, a bit. And, uh, and no matter how you do it, whether you do it by machine or whether you do it by hand, the operation is pretty much the same. Yep. And, same and Eddie, Eddie, believe me, has one of the best videos on thread chasing on the web. And the other one I would recommend is Alan Batty's on the web. If you if you Google either one of those thread chasing Alan Batty, thread chasing Captain Eddie, you'll you'll get the best of the videos there are for thread chasing. I agree. Oh. And the reason being is they they explain and leave in all the tricks to it. But there's several others out there that do a lot of threading, but they don't they don't include the tricks which are vital to being able to thread correctly. Right, yes. And again, again, there are a number of videos on using the machines also rather than thread, you know, rather than a thread yeah. chaser. There are a number of videos on the machines. Some are better than others. And you, right. you have to you watch a couple of them, you begin to think, oh, okay, that's what I need to do. And, and the instructions that come with the, the machine are actually pretty good if you read them. <laughs> if you read them. <laughs> if you read them. What wood turnip does that? Yeah, right. Right. Exactly. It's like it's a man thing. Those are the well, operative is, words. You did a great you did a great demo, buddy. I really appreciate you uh coming through for me. It's awesome. You did an awesome job. Oh thank you. Appreciate I got a it. question. Good demo, Walter. Go ahead, Brenda. What was the name of that last tool you used? The tool? Yeah, the the this tool is chasing. a this is this is the actually the thread chase the difference between this tool and the original tool that I gave away is this one has a slight negative rake on it and the tool I gave away was straight across flat across the the surface of the um, uh, the cutters or the the uh, threads these are these are kind of a helix threads and and that difference with the little bit of negative rake made a whole lot of difference, in my opinion, of, of getting the thing started without catching. I agree. Hey, Tom, can you do an do a, a overhead camera shot? And then, Walt, can you re-explain the, the negative break end of it on there? It's, it's, it's just the top surface. Of, this is a scraper. Let me see if I can get it in focus here. It looks pretty good. There you go. Put put it out a little further. There we go. Can you see that slight little bit of of, of bevel on yes. the top yes. surface? On the yes. bottom surface looks flat. Okay, looks like that. Does That's that flat. mean that you could that you could sharpen those by just like running a honing card across yes. that bevel? Yes, absolutely. That's, okay. Yeah. That's Thank how you. you sharpen them. I didn't bring. I don't know if I brought a hone with me. I I don't think so. But it must be a fine grit when you hone it. Not, yeah, not one of this, yeah. This is like a, a um, thousand grit diamond stone on mine. This is a um, 45 micron diamond sharpener, which is the roughest of the ones that come on the paddle. But if you if you just take and you and you go across across that um, bevel, you you can put an edge on it. You can feel it. It's the it's not it's not the same of bird that you would get on a um on a gallon or a regular scraper my uh, right my scraper here okay if i want to put a burr on this scraper I, if i take the burr off i want to put a burr on by coming across the bottom like this to get a burr that sits right up here on top right on this edge but on these scrapers, what we're actually doing, we're coming down like this and, and, and we're, we're not removing the burr so much as we are sharpening that very edge because originally they're sharpened, uh, it, it's sharpened against a wheel that has a radius. So you do get a bit of a um, top edge, uh, you know, uh, 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 what do I Our say? the the right. edge grind from from the, uh, the 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 radius of the wheel but you can come across that after after doing this a couple times you can touch it to the wheel a very fine grit wheel 
like uh, 180 or, or more, and just touch it against the wheel and reestablish that that uh, fine curve in there. But most of the time, if if I'm if I'm going to sharpen it, I'm just going to do this. And that that will do it. Yep. Especially, I mean, if you're using blackwood, I have to find out if they have contest. Placement. If you're using softer Plastic. wood, I, it just doesn't work I well think. with with real soft wood. You can flood this with CA glue and harden it, or if you have a stabilizer system uh, for punky wood or something like that, and put it in a vacuum jar with cactus juice and bake it, you'll you'll have wood that's hard enough to do that. But why not then just use uh, uh, when well, not bake a light, what do you call it? The the countertop material. Corian. Corian. Oh, Corian, yeah. Yeah, you can get black Corian. It'll look almost exactly like black wood, right? And it's a lot cheaper. Yep. <laughs> okay, well, thank you all. If you haven't got any other questions. Thanks, Walt. It was great. Thank yes, you. Thank Walt, you thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I learned a lot tonight. Thank you. Great thank job, you. Walt. Thank you, Walt. Good job. Great job. <laughs> Mom, have fun cleaning up. I like I like the dot painting, by the way. I thought that design for that platter will be absolutely gorgeous when you finish it. Thanks, Tom. Right. For that what bowl. Was that, bowl? that bowl that, was that bowl. you showed up the pattern, the dot pattern. Oh. Yeah. Yes, yeah. thank you. That's gonna be great. Thank you. Brenda did some dot pattern stuff? If I if I didn't if I don't miss ready for you, Oh, okay. I got she's got a pattern. We I'll, I'll speak it back to her and uh you can show it off for you. Brenda, you want to pull yeah. up your pattern, explain everything, what you got going on there for the latecomers? Well, that's cool. Yeah, that's going to be on the top of the bowl. This is awesome. The bowl I showed last week, right? And Matt said to make a pattern, and I actually measured out the bowl. <laughs> the bowl, yeah. So then I made a lid. That's nice. Lid yeah, that's that's a that's a great idea. The that's gonna be, there. Yeah, that's gonna be great. Can't yeah. wait to see it. Yeah, Brenda's filling oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. And look, I added a a bell. I think I missed last getting a candy dish. <laughs> I missed last right. week. I was getting teeth pulled. Oh, youch. So, I'm doing dots. And, and, dots. She and she practiced. Yeah. And I'm practicing, yeah. It's fun and it's addicting. Well, I like wood turning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's cooler in the house. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. Appreciate it. Uh, let me mention. Uh, if you saw that tool, the hand tool for doing hand threading, and that's a really unique piece. Um, and it's made of great steel, and the way, it, as Walt was saying, the way it's ground, it cuts nicer. Um, I put relief negative rakes on the top of my hand tools made by Sorby, I believe, and it helped a little bit. Uh, but it, the, the tool is not of the steel quality that the piece that Walt just used. Now, if you have a set of old threading tools that you don't use and you want to get rid of, why don't you mention it here in the meeting? Maybe somebody would like to get them from you and give it a try. Uh, they make interesting. Now, he shows them on an urn. But if you get it right, you can do it on almost any jaw or top that you have uh, that will that'll screw in. A uh, couple of cautions on threads. Uh, you don't want a whole bunch of them, just like Walt said. You need about two full turns, and and that's about. If you go, if you go heavy on that, um, on too many too many threads, they will get jammed up because it's too much movement. Uh, number two, you do have to have those shoulders inside, outside, so the, the threads don't get damaged when folks insert it. Um, the waxing or coating of the, the threads is really important. Uh, and I say that because if you if you have two pieces two pieces of material and you thread them together and you have the grains crossed up to where you're looking at side grain and 
and, and, and they don't work, they don't match up. Uh, movement of the wood, because God, God made wood to move. Movement of the wood will make them bind up. So let's keep them a little bit more uniform to start with, and then keep them clean and waxed. Um, and if it's an urn, you don't open and close it a whole lot. Um, and you can do this on denser wood directly on the wood, not on inserts. But as somebody said a few moments ago, it's good on a rainy day when you got a bunch of, pardon me, Kim, scraps of wood around, is to make up a couple of them and make the outside three and an eighth inch or three and a quarter inch or three and a, whatever. Keep the outside uniform and on both pieces. And when you screw them together, trim them back out with a, with a scraper and do all the sanding before you take anything off the machine. And then you've got the piece sized for the mortise that you will cut in both parts. And there's no magic to it. I'm gonna cut a three and eight, test it, three and eight, test it, and then I can put them together. Talk about grain matching on the pieces that you're putting together, that happens when you glue it together. You will set glue one part, and then you loose glue, put the other together, and then loose glue it to get it lined up, and then let it cure. Um, saying hard set, I'll use medium thick super glue on the bottom one, and I'll set the top one with uh, oh, uh, type two, and, uh, and, and let it cure. Uh, it's not a race, not a race. You have to let things cure. Um, all right, while I got it, before we get back to gallery tonight, if you have something for gallery tonight, throw it in a chat, and Dane will call on you. When Dane calls on you, start talking so we can find you in this mishmash of members that are up here. But I have to mention that next Wednesday evening, August 10th, and our meeting will be dedicated solely to tips and tricks. I wrote down six of them while we were doing that demo just now. Six tips and tricks I would have that could relate to that or other wood turning. You saw some just now, and you may have an idea what the tip and trick would be, and I'd like to see them next week, August 10th. Now, here's the other deal. Suppose you're really rotten and you don't think you can turn threads. What can you do about that? <laughs> We're going to talk about it next week and tips and tricks. Uh, and, oh, okay, I have my own idea. I dare you to come up with your own idea. Come on, come on. Let, it's come on. It's time to take me on. What is, what would you do to replace the hand threading on those pieces? All right. Don't keep it to yourself. Now it's going to happen next week. Um, and we are still in the market for a safety director. Uh, what's a safety director? Um, we'd like to have two or three minutes each week, just about the top of seven o'clock central, where and we Jeff used to do this for us when Jeff is isn't participating right now. Uh, where you can talk about the safety aspects of wood turning. Uh, we just saw Walt turning, he had a shield on. How do you maintain that shield? What's well, a good idea? Um, and why should you use the shield? It, it's, those are simple things for safety ideas. Um, rings, gloves, watches, jewelry, gizmos, gadgets, and all that. Let's talk about all that. I need a safety director, and it pays nicely. Um, and if you want to be part of it, put it in a chat or email me at worldwidewoodturners at gmail.com. And that's the address where you send me photographs to use in our promotions. And I'm, I'm working on getting a promotion out every week. And just now, I had a whole handful. I can't go back to, with my Wi-Fi thing, I can't go back to my photograph thing while this is live because they're overloaded, whatever the thing is, and I'll lose it. So I'm, I learned, don't do that. Um, <laughs> but I, if if you send me those photographs or use them in the promos, I'm looking for more and more photographs. Take pictures of your work and send it to us. And just like I received it a few minutes ago, the, the Turner did multiple shots of the piece because it's got holes in it. And, and he showed us how the holes made it look really cool and then look over the top. So, you know, and details. That's what we're looking for. And by the way, by email only, I can't take it off Facebook or anything else. Um, if you've got a good video of something in progress, Dane does great with it. Um, he sends us a piece that's spinning, then it slows down and to get the, to get it. Now we can use those in our 
pardon me, promo, it makes a nice addition to it. So if you have that action shot, email it to me. I can't get it any other way and use it. Um, that's what we're looking for also. SWAT is August 26, 27, 28 in Waco, Texas. The world's finest wood turning seminar with the nicest people ever. Uh, like, like going to a family reunion with family you like. It really is. And Dane asked me to remind you once again this evening that the 101st, 101 first, and it's on our website, is our collecting turned items. I said pins earlier. I apologize for, for being out of the sink on it. But they're looking for turned items that you can send to them and they can give to our troops as gifts from home. If you served right here, you know what it feels like to get a gift from home. You know, all it's right there. I mean, and you know about it. So if you served, get that gift from home. It's really important. And we're still doing the 22 pen thing. 22 veterans today take their lives because of a rough time. 22 pens goes to the rehab center to help them overcome some of the beasts that are in their life. And that's so bad to put it, beasts that are in their life. All right, Dane, do we have any gallery up right now? Yeah, as a matter of fact, we've got a we got a Motley crew coming up here. So let's start with uh, someone that's got a lot of action to be the safety director, Susan. Oh, you were reading the I know I see. That's Susan right here. Her down. That's not me, babies. No, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, stop oh, that sharing. Geez, Somebody man. popped in with oh. sharing. Somebody's got a screen share going on here. All right, we got there. rid of it. It's there, there she is. See, she didn't change her hair. No, not right. yet. It might, I might have purple and, and uh, teal in there one day. <laughs> That'd be all right. <laughs> uh, what you got, girl? I've been out of the shop for months because of health reasons, but I got back in there today. And right. so I did, I did a little pen. Ooh, now, nice. It, it, it's... Uh, what was it? It's nice. Turquoise stabilized box elder. Now it doesn't match, but it but it's because it, they're end cuts from two other blanks that I used for other pens. But uh, nice, nice so pretty. there then. <laughs> yeah, nothing yeah. away. Yep, still pretty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's good to me. I'll send you my address. <laughs> <All> right, <laughs> your address. <laughs> That's pretty. And, Yo, uh, Billy, Billy and uh, Brenda have just nominated me a safety thing, so yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> All right, I like this. All right, yeah, there we go. Awesome, congrats! Yeah, I'll send out the first uh, first month's payment tomorrow. <laughs> okay. And remember, put it in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. I will. We got your contact information. Yeah. And, and, and oh, we have to send you the official hat. There's a hat that goes with this. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Sue. <laughs> You're welcome. Very All good. All right. Well, let's go to this crazy guy who's still here. Charlie. Charlie Bundy. Where you at, buddy? Speak to us, Charlie. We can pop you up if, we, if you talk, sir. I guess we'll skip by him. And let's go to this crazy guy. Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? There he is. The crazy guy I see. Uh-oh. We're not safe anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Crazy guy. Hi, Scott. Hello. Hi, Scott. Hello. Yeah, this is a beauty here. Look at that. Crazy pen. Look at that crazy piece he's got. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Here. Look at that crazy piece he's got. Nice. And you can see there's a toyancy in it. Yep. It's a and real sunglasses. This is a very figured mahogany, which is kind of hard to find for this kind of figure they call me. So, there is. That is gorgeous. And it looks like, like it's got a couple of fish in there. Ooh. That's the that. Wow. Yeah. Hey, folks, please. The rim is textured. I don't know if you guys, yeah, you guys can see that. Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah, you can see it now. Yeah. yeah. So, Members, yeah. I'm kind of. 
I'm kind of What's crazy. Look through that piece. But look at the full flash about the cross the center. There's yeah. no yes. divot. There's no rise. Nope. It is absolutely smooth across the center. Yep. That is a sign of a good wood turner. Yes. That ain't, that ain't easy to do either. No, yeah, no, it's, no not. it's not. Just to let you guys know, I'm doing a pay per view IRD this week on, on how to make a platter like that. And I put, I, I put the link in the chat just a little while ago. So good. All right. Are you so nice. looking for uh, yep. Turners to turners. That's what we're looking for. Yeah, Thanks, buddy. Scott. All right. Let's go to this pool. Hey, Doug. <laughs> Wake up, Doug. Wake up, Doug. Don't make a up. You get Wake up. There we are. I I was pushing my mute button to unmute, and this little thing was up, so I, it wouldn't work. So anyway, <laughs> got two things for you this week. Um, one of the fellows over in England is known as a pin turner, and he does phenomenal segmented pins. And uh, he had one last week that was a failure. It looked great, uh, but it wasn't what he was looking for. And so I uh, asked him if he'd mind sending me the picture, see if I could work it out. And I was able to work it out. These uh, feathers or flames through here uh, with the, the piece up here at the top. Um, you know, it was all pretty neat. He had seen it done on a table saw and wanted to try it on the band saw. The trick on the bandsaw is tilt the table. He failed to do that part of it. But anyway, that's some, some of that oak that I've been using for a while on pins with some uh, walnut inserted into it. So it worked out okay. I got one little problem. I, I'm missing a horizontal there, and that was because I did not uh, drill it straight through the center. I got a little bit off. So, But I, you know, it's, I learned. I learned. Now, who, who asked We wouldn't have known that if you had told yeah. us. I'm sorry, I heard about three voices there. So we wouldn't have known that if you hadn't told us. <laughs> That's the one thing. But I'll keep this one, and the next one will be perfect. That'll be a, you know, a high dollar pin. Okay, the person in the chat that said, "How do you spell his last name?" We'll put him down for gallery. I mean, for demo is M I L L E R. Okay? <laughs> that'll be that'll be number three on the list, Dane. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the we, other one, we've, we've already got just, Doug lined up for a demo, and it's going to be a great demo. Uh, we okay. hope so. <laughs> I'm could up again. Oh, could be a failure. I got faith in you. I got faith in you, buddy. <laughs> well, it's a the, good demo. Get, the uh, other again. piece, the piece that I got off the lathe yesterday was this one. That's uh, American black walnut. That is Ooh. virtually all. That's almost all sapwood on the outside. Um, you can see the, the heartwood here at the bottom mm -hmm. inside. Uh, you can't really see inside, but it's, it's dark just like, just like this all the way through. Uh, it's about three-eighths of an inch thick. It's not very thin, um, but, you know, for a vase, you don't necessarily want them real light. Don't want them to tip over. Um, but that's got my typical finish on it. It's sanded to 320, and then we uh, uh, did the, the abrasive paste and the wax on it. And it came out real good. It feels so good in your hand. Um, that's one of the things. It got a little toyance right there. Oh, it does. <laughs> yep. Need my sunglasses. Uh, it's little, beautiful. A little bit of figure in that walnut. This is a piece of walnut that's been laying around my shop for, I don't know, nine, ten years probably. Um, finally found its way to the lathe and, and became something. But it was kind of nice to turn something of size again. I, I busted my thumb couple of weeks ago and it's uh it's it's healed but it's still sore on the inside so uh but it was good to turn something nice <laughs> it's it nice. Very, nice. very nice very nice all right thank you, thank you all all righty well let's go to uh go to philly bert philly yeah what you, what you got here he is here, let me get some light on I'm here. Eyes here. Ooh, I got boy, you. That's, that's bright, ain't it? You're lighting, I tell you. <clears throat> I know. In it's either too much. Yeah, it's either too much or not enough. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, I showed this not long ago, I think several months ago when I made it, but a, a pretty nice size turning handle. But I did that because <laughs> I put this robust collet chuck on it for my three quarter inch Thompson bull gouge. 
But that's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is I had the brilliant idea to, because this chuck, the collet chuck comes with several different sizes of uh, collets you can put in. This is the half inch. This is a three eighths inch bar that I got from, oh, I don't know. Y'all might be able to guess, but, uh, and it serves two purposes. I can put a, uh, yeah, I can put a carbide on one end and I decided, you know, I've been wanting to do an Olin tool for a long time. So the other end I drilled and uh, drilled some holes in it and tapped and I've got a piece of uh, basically it's M42 it's quarter inch cobalt there's only one problem with it it worked great but it didn't because two and a half threads just isn't enough so I'm going to have to go to a half inch round bar and drill it out and make my old old tool out of that but I had this and I wanted to try it and it and it worked but just like I said, two and a half threads in these two Allen screws wasn't enough. Uh, people say, Billy, why did you use two Allen screws? One would have been fine. Well, I over-engineer everything. I, I ground, I don't know if you can see, I ground a flat on the top of this quarter inch bar. Mm -hmm. And then I set my grinder up at 55 degrees and I made a, a ground around on it and and it cuts like a dream and uh, like i said i've been wanting to do these for years i bought these bars i've got a quarter inch high speed steel square bar that i haven't used yet and i've got this quarter inch round m42 cobalt so uh if if you've watched earl smog segmenting shop uh earl uses pretty much an old tool exclusively and it, the cuts he's getting off of them are phenomenal, which is one of the reasons I wanted to try this, but I've seen other people's using, using to anyway, that's all I've got. And it, it would, it fit in here and did a grand job, except like I said, two and a half threads just wasn't enough. Live and learn. Well, isn't that bar so, of mild that's steel, Bert, Billy? Pardon? This bar is mild, mild steel. So if it was a denser material, that might not be a problem. Maybe not. Yeah, just saying, you know. The, yeah, it's maybe how much not. Freeze can you, how much freeze can you get? And those cutters, oh, those pieces are available from MSC, Granger, McMaster mm -hmm. Car. You can get that bar, that in, a, in 42 stock. Right. And shape your own end on it. I, I think I got these pieces from uh, the little machine shop, actually. Oh, they're great. LittleMachineShop.com, great right. source of material. And don't let it throw you. Great source of wood turning equipment because you take a hard look at their 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 catalog and you'll see things and say, oh my goodness, I wish I could have bought that. Exactly. Um, especially those little plastic handles on your lake that set down your tool rest and lock your quill and stuff like that. They, the company made that lathe if it's an inexpensive lathe. That's where they got a nickel out of the deal, and you can replace it with much better equipment from at at littlemachineshop.com. And you don't pay for anything here; it's a recommendation. Thank you, Billy. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Billy. All right, Blair's gone. Whoa. All right, let's let's go to Mr. Grinstad, man from Mansfield. Uh oh. Let's see here. Anybody there? Hello. Oh, we had you. See you. Yeah, we yeah. see you. Okay, good. Looks like Eddie came. No, there he is. Okay. Uh, Cade got me inspired last week. I just had to do one of his little tops. And, uh, there you go. Turned out fine. Oh, I was waiting for that. Yep. I had, a, uh, I had a little trouble with the first one. I had to make two tops. You know, this is seven eighths like he did. Uh, my stock for this was only an inch and a half for the first time I did it and it, and it worked okay. It spin, it worked really good, but when it stopped, it wouldn't fall over. It wasn't heavy enough on the top, so it wouldn't fall over. But this one here is an inch and three quarter and, uh, and it works great. It just flops right over. 
to wait. Well, well, anyway, great. I enjoy Cade, will happy to, Cade will be happy to see that somebody uh, <laughs> went yeah, out on my to even a try. There you go. Anyway, yeah, that's it. I just wanted to show you that, well, hey, yeah, you, you need to make these right things that people demo. Yeah. All right, great. I'll let him know later tonight when I talk to him. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Yep. All right, let's go to staying in Texas. Let's go to Mr. Hatch. Hey, Tim. Hey, good evening. So, uh, you know, recovering from COVID last week, the wife yeah. had a uh, couple couple people decided they wanted a couple things. So I made this little uh, razor and stand and then a uh, couple pens for a co-worker. Those are already back at uh, her bank where she works. But uh, I thought that was a, you know, first time I've, I've turned these razor stands, um, got them out of craft supply. Again, not an endorsement for them, but just a source. And I know Penn State's also got them and everything, but uh, quick and easy project. I mean, really you're, all you're turning is basically a uh, seven millimeter brass rod put put a chunk of wood on there and, and spin it on your pen mandrel. So I had never made any of those before. I just figured I'd show those uh, to folks. And uh, believe it or not, I got 50 bucks out of some scrap wood. Outstanding. So, nice. I, I'm sorry. Nice standing, buddy. Let's stand. Yeah. Good job. Now, would you right, consider well, discount? Would you discount it if we gave it to Billy Burt? <laughs> if we sent him on to Billy Burt? Well, yeah, and and uh, I did the friends and family discount on those on those pens. I did uh, two pens for forty. <laughs> yeah, y'all don't waste your money. I wouldn't use it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help you out, Billy. That's all. Cup drops, cutoffs. Yeah, that, that type of stuff. All right, guys. Job, I'm ready to tell yeah. you something, Billy. All right. Well, uh, Randall Smith, are you there? I'm not seeing yes, you. Yes, I am. All right. Now yeah. I see you. There he Randy. is. Uh, I have one or two things. Um, this is a live center. Uh, it's referred to as a CNC live center because it has this taper that comes down. When you're making pens and you have mandrels right here, when you're using turn between centers, just make sure that you don't hit the live center with your tool. Uh, these are made essentially for CNC machines uh, for metalworking, but they work fine on a lathe. Anyway, uh, the one I wanted to share was, uh, I made this pen uh, for a friend of mine who became a United States citizen. And so I called uh, Ken Nelson, who, uh, who runs Colin Sean's Woods, and asked him if he could put the Declaration of Independence on the pen blank. And this is what he came up with. And uh, she loved it. And uh, a friend of hers a couple of weeks ago became a United States citizen. And so awesome. she asked me if I would make one for her friend. So this is the one for her friend. Beautiful. Nice. That's awesome. That's nice. That is beautiful. Yeah, Ken does good work. So yeah. anyway, that's uh, that's all I really have to share for today. Beautiful work. Beautiful. Thanks, Randy. Thank you, Randy. All right. Well, if I've missed anybody, chime in. And let me know. Otherwise, that is it for gallery. Oh no, can't be. We got a lot of work. I got on. something. Well, I got something. Who's got? Let's go who? to the basement. Let's go to the basement. What's, who's got? what's your What's your name? Who's got something? Howard. Howard King. Howard King. All right. Keep talking, Howard. I'm going to bump right, off. I'm talking, Howard. Howard. We'll bring you talk. Well, okay. Um, this is wow. a, a whoa. Bow made out of ash. Can y'all see that? Yes. Uh, yeah. Do what? 
No, I keep talking. We're still. I'm still trying to bring you up here. I'm, oh, okay. I'm All right. Uh, this natural Howdy. edge made, made out of a. Um, I got it. Edge. Okay, and, thank you. Um, that is gorgeous. And um, but but I, I got a crack in it, big old crack here in the end. And I think yep. I got the crack from when oh, I, I tried to make the funnel out of it. <laughs> oh, oh man. man. That's a place for a medallion. That's what you put there. Yeah, yeah. and I got, got, a big, got a big gash in it where it went, came off the lathe, plus got some marks on it when it came off the lathe. So anyway, I, I guess that would what be is, a, you What is put the you size a, of that thing? You can put you a medallion and a pedestal on that thing. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I guess about 20, <laughs> it's about 20 by 16, I guess, something like that. Wow. wow. I got a good peep hole here. <laughs> <laughs> it's so anyway, oh, anyway, turn it into a lampshade. Yeah. There you go. I mean, that, that would work, wouldn't it? Wow. Hey, you could, you could have yes, it would. Good. You That'd be a good, good, good place to fit in a pedestal. So, yep. so I thought I'd go ahead and turn something I already had a hole in it. And so this is a oak. <laughs> and um oh that's beautiful. Oh, hole. that is gorgeous. Yeah, yes, real pretty. Is. Those are hard to turn. Man. Pretty. It's yeah, a nice I, I have I know what's involved with that. Pardon? I said I know what's involved with that. Yeah. I had a nice little uh, peninsula right here, yep. right here that stuck out, and I I lost it. It went flying across the uh, shop. So, okay. but most of it stayed together. Turned out real nice. That's a great job. How, how, fast, how, fast did, how fast did you spin that? <laughs> um. Well, after I got the outside, I wrapped it up with shrink wrap, yep. and then I hollowed it out. Yeah, what'd you what'd you hollow that about six seven hundred RPM? Yeah, yeah, about yeah. five hundred. I usually around yeah. five hundred. Okay. Five, yeah, I do, I do mine about about six. So, yep. Yeah, yeah. I was really hard. I would you get for a wall thickness? Uh, about uh, a little over eighth of an inch. So uh, there you go, right on, right on. Beautiful and piece. so uh, beautiful piece. It has so many mark inclusions in it that I was real kind of worried about it. So that's why I wrapped it up with squeak wrap. Mm -hmm. yep. and, uh, you know what, from anyway. the side of it, it looks, looks like a ninja turtle. Oh, <laughs> turn it, turn it, and turn it towards you, the other way. Howard did, you, Howard, did you see the piece that I did last week? A little oh. more. Let me, let me go grab the piece that's similar to that with the, with the huge voids. You'll see the interest in, uh, I'm not seeing why I'm now. talking about it with. Oh, him. tip it over. Tip it sideways. There he is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so you got your hand in his mouth. Oh, I see. Oh, it. my goodness. <laughs> I yeah, see it, Brenda. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you see that? <laughs> I think Brenda's got a point. <laughs> yeah. the point. It's got a tongue. <laughs> so, Howard, Howard, what, what kind of what kind of wood was it? It's oak, oak. red oak. Beautiful. I'm sorry, white oak. My fault. White oak. Yeah, white oak. But it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it still, still looks great. Very nice. Well, thank yes. you. Very nice. So, Howard, this is the one that I shared last week. Okay. Let me, let me do the spotlight here. Did you sit on it? Look, looks like it squashed out. <laughs> and, and so I did the, you know, so I did the same thing. You know, once once I got the outside shape, I shrunk wrap it and then hollowed it out, you know, at about 600 RPMs. Well, you got a bunch of big cracks in that. Oh, yeah. It's, you know, it's through and through. I mean, on the, on the top, on the side there. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was... Man, it was you're lucky. It was, it was it was scary, and, and I took it to I took it to an eighth of an inch as well. Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah, what that I'm saying. Kind of, it's a little nerve wracking. I, I, I get why you were feeling when you were turning it. I, 
Well, that gets a little nerve wracking. Frankly, Dane, I'm amazed sure. that thing held together. Yeah. Uh -huh. I said, frankly, I'm amazed that held together. Oh, I know, right? But it's, yeah, you know, both of those pieces. It's, it's nice and solid. So, you know, but again, the key, the key to doing something like that is doing the shrink wrap before you start hollowing because you've got uh, nothing holding it together essentially on, on, on a voided piece like that. And so you need that shrink wrap to, to keep everything together as, as you're hollowing through uh, the internal surface. So, that's a, yeah, that's right a good, on, Howard. That's, that's awesome. a good tip. Yep. Oh, oh by the way, uh, some guy was telling me that the box uh, boxwood over in Europe, in Europe that uh -huh. uh, is, is dying out. They have a blight or something, and they're trying to save it, but um, may not be any more boxwood. Oh, huh. mm. is uh, any of our UK guys on? Pardon? No, I was just checking to see if any of our UK guys were on. I didn't um, see them, Dane. No, yeah, I don't see Paul or Mick. Martin's in uh, Hungary right now. James is recovering from <clears throat> final surgery. Yeah, there's nobody on. <clears throat> yeah, so I'll, I'll have to inquire next week uh, when I'm at, uh, at yeah, They were talking about it at meeting. the, uh, at the uh, AAW uh, symposium a couple, about a month ago there in Chattanooga. Some guys was yeah. talking about it. And um, so huh. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard enough. Shame, you know? It's hard to get now, you know? Right. So, yeah. Yeah, it'll yeah. suck if that's the case. Mm. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, I know I got two guys on here, and they haven't said they have anything, but I got a feeling Joaquin's got something. Joaquin, you got anything, buddy? Yeah, I've got something. I got a story to go with this too. You know, you know, All in right. your career, Daddy, you try to figure out something that you're a specialty at. You know, like <laughs> you know, uh, different people they got this and that. You know. And so I try to figure something out that to be a specialist in. And it's funny how some things choose you. And it's been Christmas trees. I don't know how many Christmas trees I've made just uh, in the last month or so, a couple of them. And, uh, but it looked like I, my, that's my specialty, not wanting that to be my specialty. And I just keep getting orders for these Christmas trees, you know. No, oh, that one's got a cross on it. Nice. Yeah, huh? That's that's Texas Ebony. And, uh, mm -mm -mm. Nice. This is just a tree. So it's just a tree. Yeah. <laughs> so, shiny trees. Pam Thompson called me from SWAT. She's vice president there, and she said, "Hey, walk in. Somebody uh, canceled out, and we wonder if he's interested in demoing." And I said, well, yeah, I'd be honored to demo. And so I couldn't figure out what in the world am I going to demo? And I remembered uh, Matt and I, we demoed that leaning Christmas tree. I'll set Christmas tree. Real nice. So that's going to be my demo there. And uh, oh. I did a new drawing. Let's nice choice. And... Um, it's just funny that I've gotten tagged with Christmas trees. Is, uh, yeah, it is funny. not really what I wanted to be my specialty, but that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. That's awesome, Joaquin. Great story. Awesome. Yeah. And what's funny, I, I looked at the schedule. They got me on the first thing, 10 30 Friday morning. Okay. I look at the schedule. You got Andy Wolf. You got uh, Mahoney, you got uh, Martin Smith and Barry, all these fantastic players. I worried about somebody coming to my demo about being so many people. I don't think I'm going to have to worry about with all them guys there. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to be surprised and you're going to just be the inverse. Well, anyway, I just thought I'd let y'all know that. Yeah, that's nice. awesome, Mark. Yeah. That's great. You bet. All right. Wish I could see uh, Let's go to Joaquin's uh, other buddy. I know he's on here. Terry, you got anything, buddy?
you. You're muted. I'm there. I didn't come there in, but go. I got a little bit. I was out of town last week, so I didn't get much done, and I haven't done a lot. Anyway, still there. I'm hitting background noise. But I didn't get a lot done anyway, but I did finish up the last piece of that ash that I had for a lampshade. And I'll have to say that I, out of 20, I never did get it the one I wanted. I got up there. I give this last one a maybe a B plus if I'm real proud of myself. But it came out pretty good. I learned a lot, but I ran out of wood, and I'm kind of glad I did because I don't have any more room in the house. But the lamps, I, I think I can bring it down. I changed the shape of it and oh, uh, wow. brought it all around to the bottom. It's got a big Gorgeous. curve in the bottom. And it came hey, out pretty good. That. It's about it's about 14 inches that it crossed and maybe six and a half, seven tall. And uh, I, I, right now I've just got it on a donor base. Just the lamp that I bought at the shop for the parts, because it has this, the uh, swan neck light bulb sockets that I wanted, and it lights up pretty good. And I managed to get it down at a pretty good. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm getting a little glare in it. I'm getting a lot of glare. Just a little. Bottom. Maybe you can it down a little, a little bit of glare, and you can see the shade. But it I came out pretty good. I wasn't real pleased. I got it right here. I got a little bit of a rub and got it just a little thin. That's why it's kind of yellow going around there. And I was trying not to do that. But on most of the hollowing that I've done, that's a real touchy spot right there. And you have to really be careful going around there when you're trying to get thin because you're going with the grain orientation, you're going downhill here, and then you start at the bottom and you're going downhill there. And when you're trying, the only thing I can get in here with is a scraper. And I'm in there with a scraper trying to work on dead end grain. And it doesn't go too good, but when you start to get around to the bottom and start to go downhill or uphill, downhill from one side or downhill from the other side, it, cuts real easy right there. And I've got a little rub on several of them, but I'm pretty happy with it. I'm kind of glad that I don't have any more wood. You probably are too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. It's, it is gorgeous, Terry. Nice job, I, Terry. I got Good quite luck. a few of them done and I was kind of happy with it. I, I worked on some of the other ones, redoing the bases. It's kind of a it's, it's kind of, I, I really don't know what to do with them. I'm kind of mm. hesitant to sell them because actually they're an electrical appliance and codes and everything, and they have to have LED bulbs in them. And I'm not sure how you get that warning out to anybody that buys them. And they're, you know, they're not, I feel they're 100% safe and I've got them in my house all over the place and I burn them a lot to make sure nothing gets warm. But I'm still a little concerned about having them on the market, which isn't too bad of a thing for me because I really don't go into trying to sell a lot of stuff. I just don't like doing it. So I just got them around where I get them. But it's been a, it's been a lot of fun doing them and everything. And I, I can see why there's only a few that I see on YouTubes and stuff, people that do them. And I think it's probably because it'd be hard to really put them in a marketing situation to get the money that you would need because there's a lot of work. You got more work in making the lamp than you do in making the shade. So by the time you got done, it's pretty labor intensive. And like I say, it's a little touchy on the safety thing, so I don't know. But I've had a real good time making them. And I don't know if I'll make any more or find a home for some of these. To help. I'm going to have to get less lamps or a bigger house, one of the two. <laughs> hey, Terry. Yeah, Terry. Yeah. Hey, Terry. I got to yeah. tell you, I got to tell you, I was at a garage sale today and this guy had a few pieces that he'd gotten from somebody else, you know, that he was selling. So we were talking about wood turning, you know, 
and he had some lamps sitting there too. And I told him, I said, you wouldn't believe this guy on my meeting that makes these lampshades, turns these lampshades, you know? And he's like, a lampshade? I'm like, yeah, turns a lampshade. He's like, those probably be pretty heavy. I said, no, they are super thin and you can see through them. That they are beautiful. This guy was just amazed by it. Well, Terry would have no problem selling these, but he just don't want to mess with it. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy asked me, what do you sell them for? I'm like, he don't sell them. He keeps every one of them. Yeah. I think he's made 20 of them, and, and he's kept every one of them. Yeah, the problem is, Terry, if you ever start selling them, you're going to have to make a whole lot more. Yes, because those things are beautiful, and they will sell like crazy. Well, Terry, as long as you don't sell them, you'll remain well lit. <laughs> yeah, you, oh, yeah, you no. don't have any trouble looking for a light. Hey, Terry, you can just send them to me and I'll sell them. There you go. Take care of both, take care of both our problems. There Always you go. such a nice yeah, group think... of folks. I'll even, I'll even give you a cut. <laughs> <laughs> I think Joaquin has got a plan lined up for Christmas time or something. It looks like we're going to put a wood turning carver show back together this year that we haven't had since the pandemic. February. So we, That'll we, be in we, February. February. Yeah. February. Uh -huh. So maybe if we can find some dark corner where I can set it, maybe we'll set some up. That would be a good plan. And, uh, yeah. That would. And, uh, that's about all I got. Not I, was, right. I watched we know last week we know what I was up in New Mexico. To. Nice job, Terry. I love your lampshades <laughs> and your lamps. I don't know too much about doing a demo. My Wi-Fi isn't good. And I'm anybody that knows me can pretty well tell you that I'm hardwired. This electronic stuff does not go over well with me. I, I like to, when I have a switch on something, I like to flip the switch and have it do the same thing every time I flip the switch. And computers don't do that. <laughs> Right. So, but I, I try to get along. Maybe someday what, we get some better Wi Fi. I might be able to get together with Joaquin, maybe at his shop, set some cameras up and do a demo together. But I don't think yeah, I don't have great. the Wi Fi is bad. Great. Well, thank I you. Know, I'm, trying get, I'm trying to get Joaquin on the hook as well, and he's, he's working through his Wi Fi as well. So. Yeah, he has trouble with his too. I don't know. Yeah, That's yeah, I know. I, I, I got, I got you three down there already. You know, I've, I've talked to all of you. So <laughs> we'll have to all find right. some place to go to the shop. Thinking know, maybe right? we'll take off and go up to Cades or something. We use his shop. He seems yeah. to have a good. Well, setup. what we got to do is get you to go into your phone settings and and, and, and click off Wi-Fi and use use the mobile network. <laughs> Be good to go. Yeah, I'm T Mobile. Anyway. You know how that works, don't you? You know, well, no, I see, that's, works, that's the thing. <laughs> see, I've got T Mobile and I've got great connection. You must be right by oh. the tower. <laughs> yeah, I, well, even even when I go to the backwoods in, in Kentucky, I've got great connection. Prior prior to uh, T Mobile, I had Sprint, and I couldn't when I was in Kentucky. There was there was you know, no no phone calling, no text messaging, no internet, no no service at all. And now it's like just like you're sitting at the tower. So I don't know. You know me personally, I've, I've got great great service with T-Mobile. Anyway, it, it, my that, phone my phone's T-Mobile and it works pretty good all local. Even I went to New Mexico last week and two weeks ago. And it worked good all the time up through there. I didn't have any problem with it. Yeah. No. Where I have trouble is my local Wi-Fi. Right. It's, yeah, understandable. It, no, that's all good. I'm just trying to twist your arm and keep twisting it. Yeah, I thought about it. And I, like I said, I'm not very computer literate, but my game's pretty smart. So maybe I get together with them someday. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I know. We'll, we'll if we don't scare each other, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Don't worry about it. It's all good. All right. Let's okay, go to this wild man. Hey, Birdhouse Bob. Hey, how's everybody doing? Doing good, Bob. Doing good. A couple bowls of this uh, bird bass I did. 
This is turquoise oak. <laughs> yeah, that don't grow on trees. Yeah, it grows on trees. Uh, and then I got a piece of maple that I did. Oh, uh, that's the, maple. Yeah. What do you see in there, Brenda? Nice. A unibrow. And a little texture in <laughs> the bottom. There's a unicorn. A unicorn, huh? Unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Hiding uh, behind I'm the just, turquoise. I'm, yeah, he's you know, in there is, somewhere. It's a turquoise. A I've been ex experimenting with Joe Sonia face. That is gorgeous. Thank you. That's what I got. Awesome. Awesome work as always, Bob. Absolutely. No, yeah, looks great. All Bob. right. Thank you. And then let's go to. Ron Vincent. Ron, you out there? I am here yet. You there find you me? Are. I got you. Okay, I just got a couple pins here. This one here is oak burl and some acrylics. Nice. Very nice. That's nice. I like that shape. This one is patchwork. And I can't even I tell like you what the woods were. It was just some scrap that I had. Yeah. I like and I it. Looped it together good. and then turned it. Well, it, work, it works together well. Yes, it does. That looks cool. Nice. And then this, good job, Ron. This was maple and walnut, and it was, uh, I just oh, cut wow. some squiggly lines in it and glued it back together. Wow. Looks good. Nice. That's what I have. That's a cool design, Rob. Yes, I like that. Thank you. Yeah, nice. Can you do it? Right on. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing when y'all ask them to mail them to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate it. All yeah, right. See my note? Um, we have a piece I... showing right now that we should take a look at. Walt Wager. All right. Let's go to Walt's Walt. work. Hey, Walt. Oh, my goodness. Now we got you. Your... world. I'm, that doesn't look like Walt's work. That's not a threaded insert. No. I think, I think Tom's going Walt to run get in that. a co conspirator. Uh huh. Now, is that your piece, Tom, or is that Walt's? No audio yet. You're muted, Walt. Or Tom. I'm muted. Can't hear you. Yeah, he's going, he's going to unmute himself. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I can hear you. All right. There we go. He's on All right. the end. Now we're off mute. Yeah. That's a cool little round table. I like that. Amazon. Oh, okay. Yeah, you I have a neighbor, a, that there rescues, that, huh? a neighbor that rescues uh, roadkill furniture. He'll drive down the street and see something put out on the curb and bring it home and make something out of it. And he had a set of oak table legs he was going to put in the burn pile. And I said, I could use them. So mm -hmm. I decided to make a little something. It's uh, just a sphere turned on the end of a laminated oak table leg and uh, textured it with a needle scaler on the sides and then uh, black latex paint. And the finish on the sphere and the top was just uh, homemade abrasive wax that I use. It's a uh, diatomaceous earth and beeswax and mineral oil. So I think That's I cool. A little improvement from this to that. Yeah, 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 yeah that's cool. I <laughs> like that. And yes, then, job, Tom. It looks, it looks turn good, tables Tom. are like fifteen bucks on Amazon, and they just have a little battery backup that I plug it into. That's cool. That's what I got. Good night. Right on. Appreciate it. Thank okay. you. Nice. Nice.
Thank you. Very nice. All right, so I don't have anything to share tonight because I just mailed mailed them off today. Um, but if you go to the Facebook uh, page, you can see the Mazer cup that I made. Um, it was made out of black cherry and has a one sixteenth of an inch wall thickness from the, from the rim to the base. Uh, the piff is in uh, again to blow away the 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 great piff myth. Um, you. Hear me and Cade and Dean and a few others talk about that in our uh, ingrained turnings. Um, and then I also did a alligator jawbone pen with a different resin mix. So it's a red, red and black. It's posted there as well. And also, it got mailed off today. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, I'm working on a. Vessel right now for the fountain pen. Uh, this is going to hold the ink. Very nice. Be drawn out for the fountain pen. Um, so this is a late edition add-on for that order. So it's just is that a mesquite? simple little box. Yes, it's mesquite. I love mesquite. Gorgeous. It's like a mushroom. Just a simple <laughs> snap cap. And so I'm doing my finish in tongue oil. Um, the, P, the, the Mazer cup that I have posted on, on the, on the web page is finished in tongue oil. Um, when I do my final sanding at 400 grit, I use boiled linseed oil as the median uh, to get that final surface and for the oil to soak into the grain and bond with the wood fibers. And then that allows the plum oil to build and, and, and create that super shiny, lustrous shaving style mirrored finish that uh, several of us here and within the group like to do. Um, and then the ink pen um, with it being resin, um, I finished it in 3408. So I ran out of 3460 or 360, the ink pen stuff. Um, but yeah, go check it out. You can see what they look like and go from there. Thank you, Dane. Thanks for listening to me. Very Matt, nice. Matt. Thanks for sharing tonight, Dane. We had a pretty good get together. And just now I'm looking at the, uh, the chat and Tim Hatch, just recovering from the, the COVID, um, he threw a little note in the chat about where you can get that motorized turntable with um, automatic collectible. You want me to get all the numbers? No, just go to the chat. And, and it's, right. it's right there. The link's in the chat. Uh, okay, the whole thing ends on the number five. There you go. Uh, <laughs> now, Scotty said about using Corian, Walt did, using Corian to do your threads. And I had a, a personal message or whatever said, where can we buy those pieces? Well, check your local Corian countertop outlet. Now, I'm not saying you're going to go there and find black 4x4 four four squares. They have 4x4 four four squares of Corian for sample pieces. But you may find other colors that you can use and consider that as Walt used it tonight to show you, the color of those threads really aren't that critical. They're inside the piece once you tighten them down. So if you get a piece of burnt orange maple, such and such, it's okay. Uh, but I, I, we, we've been talking Corian. Watch the knockoffs. Some of those knockoffs are too yeah. soft. They look like great countertop material, but when you start threading them, they tend to melt uh, rather than slight, rather than scrape. And remember, the whole thing is a scraping project. Now we just we have a new safety director now. It is Sue, uh, and she'll be giving us a little two or three minute presentation each meeting on safety ideas and preventions, et cetera, et cetera, down around your shop. Something we've been doing for a while, and we're going to go back to doing it again. It's because if you do this, you have to be safe. Bottom line. Um, next week, August 10th, is going to be tips and tricks. And boy, I tell you what. 
every time you did something tonight, every time somebody shows something tonight, every time we saw a demonstration, I came up with tips and tricks. And you can, you have too. And some were really simple, but can save a novice turner a lot of trouble. I mean, when I, when I do a project that helps folks draw it out, get a piece of graph paper, draw it out on graph paper, actual size. And graph paper gives you all the squares or whatever. But draw it out actual size. This gets that. And when you turn it, that I design is already in here. You're not developing it in here. You're right. transferring it from this to the wood. So if you do it's just that simple little trick and um, it helps immensely when if you're putting things together, like the Walt show tonight about putting the threads together. Uh, if you're in doubt as to how it works, draw it out. I mean, actually draw the threads out. And then you get an idea of what kind of dimension change you're going to have. And as Walt showed really well, chamfer the corners inside and outside, or how would you say interior and exterior threads. Chamfer the corners so you relieve the, the bushings, I mean, the, the, the brush marks and the splinters and all. Because you do know that a wood turn is going to pick it up, screw it up, and run his finger around it and see how it is. You do know a wood turn is going to do that. So eliminate that little hazard and get it all finished up so he can go, oh, yeah, nice. You know, because, you know, you'll be judged. Um, Dave Kingsley suggested that we look at a couple of different things for our our little program, our little um, oh, inquiries. I don't want to say polls, but inquiries. And Dave, we're going to do this. Uh, we he's asking some questions. We're going to get this in the future. Uh, where do you get your raw wood? Now we we saw a couple of people talking about wood tonight, and just now we saw a piece of furniture that was laminated oak. If you didn't catch that piece just now, that was a three three pieces put together to create that leg, and then it was color color stained or sprayed or whatever to add some color to it, but. That was a PC picked up off of a mm, trash pile. Uh, in fact, today I was looking at furniture across the street that got thrown out, <coughs> and, and it's, it's junky. Um, but where do you get the wood? Is it fog wood? Fog wood. Fog, F O G, found on ground, right? Or did you have it donated to you by somebody who had an extra piece, like? Joaquin does. He has extra pieces and he sends them over to, to Terry uh, or he doesn't know Terry comes and gets them. Uh, but, you know, if it's shared that way. Well, now when he's looking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't supposed to talk about that. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> okay. The other is tree services. Do you have a friend in a tree service business? Now, you make that friend by having the one that works on the tree in your house or your neighbor's house or across the street or whatever, and you go talk to the guy. And you say, what I like to have? Because they, they have an amazing source of wood. And a lot of times, folks don't know what a burl is when it comes off a tree. It's just a knot. Um, and that'll get cut off and thrown into the burn pile. So ask your, guy, your tree guy, say, hey, look, I'm looking for something like this. You bring it on to me, I'll take care of you. I'll buy you lunch. You know, or whatever. Don't buy him a drink, he climbs trees. Um, I'll buy you lunch or something like that. And that's a way to get it from another source. Uh, we, I have a tree yard about a mile, mile and a half away. And for years, I could just walk through the yard and pick up anything I want. And then a professional, get this professional, Turner found out about it. He holds the lease on the, pro the, the property, uh, owns the property, he's leasing it to the tree guy. He made him stop giving what he was like I had it. He wanted to lock up his source. Make a source. Get your own source. Smart move. And then also Dave Kingsley suggested, how do we cover homemade tools? Now you don't how refreshing it is to go in a shop and turn something and know that you created the parting tool. You sharpened the resharpened the scraper. You did that little relief thing that uh, was shown tonight, Walt showed tonight, where you do go in and relieve the, the grooves. 
the, the threads. You need to do that on a machine thread or a hand thread. You really do. It's a great detail. You have to stop the thread someplace, and it gives you a working spot. And then if you're really going for, it will throw it. If you're only threading the piece that you want to put together, and I'll bring up one next week and show you, and you need a thread match, having that relief there gives you a chance to do some little bit of adjusting to get that thread match. It's a trick, but it can be done. It can be done. All right. Remind you again that the 101, the 101st uh, group is still looking for turned items to give our troops. That information is on our website, and there's so much on our website. I talk to people every single day about this club, every day, and I t they all ask how about it. I say go to the website. What's there? Everything you ever want dealing with returning is right there. Great gallery, great videos. Excerpts from our demonstrations. This will, I'm going to put Dave on line. This will be up in a couple of days on, on this demonstration so you can see it. Uh, a gallery, tips, tricks, your ideas, and all that. Our website, worldwidewoodturners.org. And uh, I think that kind of wraps up the night we're running into overtime. I just want to make sure you, you were all on board with what we're doing. And we're always looking for demonstrators. If you're interested, put it in chat. I want to demonstrate. If you show something really cool and you don't watch out, Dane's going to sign you up for a demonstration anyway. All right. Hey, uh, Eddie? Yes, ma'am. I think Donald Masterson has something to say. Oh, hey, Donald. Save the chat. Where's he at? That's the one. Save the chat. There you go. <laughs> Save the chat. Save the chat. I'm trying hey. to steal it. From Australia, yes. save the chat. Save the chat. I steal Donald's fire every week, but <laughs> I'm going right now. You go to the little three buttons and hit it and say save chat. Now, if you miss that, if you miss it, you can always go to the Royals Gridders Wood Turning website. That's where it'll be. So, and we do just that because wood turners are sharing with wood turners. Some of no the commercial best endorsement, the no requirements. It's absolutely free. You, you can bring your friends along with you. With that, I'm in overtime, folks. We got to get out of here. Got to say good night. And uh, good night, everybody. Be good, sweet, and be safe. Good night, everybody. Good night, all. Good night, everybody. Good night, all. Everybody. Good night, all. Everybody. Good night, all. Great meeting. Great meeting, everybody. Good night. Good night. Awesome contributors. Fabulous demo. Good night, everybody. Have a great week.